Good morning. Good morning. That'll bring them in from out in the hallway. How about that? Thank you for joining us today, whether you're here in person or whether you're listening to us through the live stream. We're blessed that you're here this morning. You're going to be blessed in a special way. It's already been a great day here at the Glenvale Church of God. So lots going on. Uh, lots happened in the first service. We pray that uh, the same will happen in this second service. We look forward to that. First and foremost, I think Tom was handing them out. And, and uh, Patty, I believe you get your April two, 2024 calendar, right? Okay, you have that. That's what we live by. That's what we live by for the month here at the church. Okay, so make sure you pick that up. Also, uh, those of you who are interested, I'll have it posted after the service. Uh, Join Hands Ministry sent us a thank you letter for the contribution that we made. Uh, we continue to support that ministry, so we'll have a letter out there for you to, to look if you would like to see that. Uh, for those of you who have not been here for a little while, there'll be no junior church, and we're revamping how that all works. Uh, this evening, however, there will be Focus and Focus Junior at 545. And one of the things that's not on the calendar for tonight, there will be a service at 6 p.m. There will be the service at 6. It'll be live streamed. Uh, you're welcome to come out. Pastor Dave will be handling that as well. Uh, tomorrow is our adult fellowship luncheon at 12 noon. Uh, Bible study at 1 o'clock with Helen. Wednesday evening, we'll have devotions and prayer at 6 o'clock. Saturday, those of you ladies who are interested in the Bethel's Ladies Group Sister to Sister Women's Retreat. That's the 13th, this coming Saturday. You need to pre-register by today. I think there's still some forms out there on the bulletin board that you're, you're welcome to take advantage of. Uh, also, uh, there's a, a special need here. An empty soup cans and 15-ounce vegetable cans are needed for Focus Junior. Uh, Pastor Dave, you want to come forward? And then I'll finish up here. Good morning. Actually, i got two announcements for you. First one is you'll notice that some of the Sunday night services are not showing on the calendar. There's a reason. When we put too much on Sunday, and that's good, I understand this is good, the printer kicks something off automatically, and it's been kicking off the Sunday night service, usually the last thing we list. So even though you don't see it through the month, that's what's actually happening is the calendar is kicking it out, and if we make everything small enough for it all to fit, you can't read it. So we're going to have to live with that until we come up with a, a, a better fix for that. But that's what's happening. Sunday nights, we just can't squeeze everything in that we need to. Next thing is community days are coming. Who knows what that is? I got a hand up. I got a, ha I got a hand. Okay. Lions Club, Moose, Fire Department have come together, and they're putting a community day together where we come down and all the ministries, all the functions, everything that happens in the community of Marysville gets together and we set up display booths all up and down the grass mall there. And we share with you what's going on. And here's the beauty of this. They asked us to come in last year and we were there. And we had a wonderful time. We had face painting, we had a prayer booth, we had uh, people handing out information about the church, tracks. And, and the big thing is we got to talk with people. And it was funny, some of them did not want to come in to the prayer area, but they would stand out front at a safe distance, and they would talk. And people need a little Jesus, even if Amen. you're never going to get them in the building. They still need Jesus. So that's going to happen on the 20th of this month. It's a short notice, uh, but we can do it. Or we can do everything we did last year. We can do more. There's no restrictions on what we do. Anything we choose, we can do down there. So we're going to reach out to the community. If it's rain, we move inside. It just still happens. Rain or shine event. And uh, the next thing you need to know, there's no cost to us for doing it. They do ask us to put it together a basket of goodies that they will put up an auction off, uh, like a silent auction type of thing, uh, to help fund the, the cost of it overall. But they're asking no monies of anybody. Anybody can go in and set up a stand. If you want to go in and sell ice cream, you can do that too for no charge. They're trying to get a couple hot dog trucks in there and what have you. So anyhow, it's going to be a great time. Now here's the other thing that makes it more interesting this year than last. This is the opening day for Marysville Youth Baseball Program. And there's going to be a lot of people went through there. They intentionally did this to increase the traffic flow and there's going to be a lot of people there. What that means is, I need your help. Please, please volunteer. We have a wonderful 
chance to do some wonderful outreach. Just see me and I'll give you more details. Thank you, church. Thank you, Pastor Dave. And there are some other announcements that I do have. There will be a memorial service here for Harriet Flesher. That will be on Friday the 19th. We don't have all the times and everything uh, solidified yet. We'll get that taken care of here in the next day or so, and we'll make sure that you're aware of that. Also, uh, again, on Saturday the 20th, we have the Passover celebration. So not only is there Ma Marysville Community Day, we have the Passover celebration from 3 to 6 here uh, downstairs. On the Sunday the 21st, this is a busy, busy week, uh, West Shore Global Reach Partners Spring Rally, that's at Everly's Mill Church of God, light refreshments at 5.30, and the rally at 6, and for those of you who aren't familiar with that, it's the West, it used to be called the West Shore Missionary Forum, that's the, that's the same event, so uh, please plan on attending that if you're interested. The 22nd and the 23rd of April is the Eastern Regional Conference Annual Conference Sessions, they'll be held at Dublin Gap Center, that's where the pastors go to represent the church and so forth. So Pastor Dave and I will be at that on those days. And then jumping ahead a little bit at camp, also they have the Hike and Rockerthon, and that will be on Saturday, May 4th. Saturday, May 4th. And uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, there's pamphlets out on the bulletin board. Uh, Helen, Helen Warren and, and Linda Seitz are already planning to participate, so if you'd like to support them. Amy. Amy's going to support, okay, if you'd like to support any of them, uh, as far as sponsoring them, see them, or if you'd like to hike or rock, you're welcome to do that as well. And please mark this date on your calendars also. It's a busy time of year. Brothers in Christ, excuse me, Brothers in Grace are having a concert here at the church on Sunday evening, May the 5th. Sunday, May the 5th, they're having their concert here at the church, Brothers in Grace. And lastly this morning, what I'm going to share with you is the ladies' tea, which will be on Mother's Day, May 12th. At 9 o'clock, that'll be downstairs, and we're going to celebrate Mother's Day with tea, coffee, pastries, fellowship, and fun. And for all of you, the most important thing that you need to know about this, well, two things. First of all, you're to wear your favorite apron, okay? If you have an apron you like to wear, you'll wear that. And secondly, it's for ladies and females of all ages, okay? Not just people who are mothers, it's ladies and young ladies of all ages. So please plan on attending that. Okay, that's, I could go on for announcements, but uh, I think you've had enough for now. So at this point, I'm going to ask if, uh, if you would uh, bring in the, the light of Christ into the sanctuary. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for the day that you blessed us with. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your house to worship you through song and through hearing from your word and through testimony this morning. We thank you for the way that you watch over us and bless us and protect us. We thank you for the beautiful sunny day that you've blessed us with today as well. So now, Father, as we move forward in this service, we ask that you would open our hearts and our ears and our minds for that which you have in store for us. We invite your Holy Spirit to be alive and well working through this time. Father, have your way with it. We thank you and praise you for all things. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For those of you who aren't aware, we sent out emails and so forth. Today we're going to hear a testimony from Zena Speck of, of Ali. And uh, one of the things that is part of that this morning, before we go into our regular worship music and our regular worship time, we have a, a video for you this morning. So please listen. And this is Ali singing. So please listen and be blessed.
Son, not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take the way my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. And lead me home What joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And then proclaim Sometimes a good reminder of exactly how great God is, right? But we worship him this morning. And I pray as the service goes along that we would worship him together through the testimony that we hear. Would you uh, stand with us? Let's sing the doxology together and then, and then we'll worship as well together. <clears throat> Praise God from whom all flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. remind you as we do every Sunday that you can give by putting your tithes and offerings in the box that's in the back right inside the back door or you can give electronically as well by going to glenvalechurch.com so Lord we pray you bless the gifts and the givers and we thank you so much for the blessings you pour out on us each and every day let us honor you and let us bless you here today with our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. So many reasons to bless God and to praise him. But let's just never forget his goodness. And let us worship him today.
bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Worship your holy name. Bless the Lord as Karen plays. Just lift your hands to him today. Worship his holy name. strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever more bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. I'll worship Your holy name. Isn't God good? So good. You know, people we love pass from here to there, and we miss them tremendously. But there is coming a day in which we'll be together again. And we so look forward to that day, right? Somebody say amen to that. Of the blessed and 
and our spirits shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the blessing of rest. In the sweet, in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above we will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet, in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. Shall meet on that beautiful shore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just so th thankful today. Jesus said at one point, I am going to prepare a place. For you, right? <laughs> so that where I am, there you could be as well. And uh, I just, wow, I could sing about that all day long. And uh, But I thank God for the promise. And um, we just want to close out on a hopefully familiar old song here this morning. Shall we gather at the river? Where bright angel feet have trod With us crystal flowing forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river The beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the bosom of the river, where the Savior King we own, we shall meet and sorrow never meet the glory of the throne. Yes, we'll gather at the river the beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints at the river That flows by the throne of God Ere we reach a shining river Lay we every burden down Grace our spirits will deliver beautiful, the beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach a shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease, soon our happy hearts will quiver, with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows 
by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Good morning again. I don't know about you, but I thought the river was going to come to us the way the rain was this week. How about that? Wow, we serve an awesome God. Lots of things going on in the church. And if you paid attention to the news or if you were paying attention to anything this week, you all felt the earthquake. Anybody feel the earthquake? Didn't you feel the earthquake? Wow. I did, and it was funny because Norma was doing her exercises for for her legs, and I said, that feels like an earthquake. And I, I was just kidding, but the house rumbled for a little bit, and uh, actually there was an earthquake. All you had to do was watch the news the rest of the day. That's all they talked about. So we have earthquakes, and we have rain, and we have storms, and we have flooding. Tomorrow there's an eclipse. Sounds sort of biblical, doesn't it? How about that? How about that? Folks, the end is near. The end is near. We don't know for sure. In fact, even Jesus didn't know for sure. But all we know for sure is that we're one day closer today than we were yesterday. But we're getting closer. We're getting closer. It's scriptural. It's scriptural. Now, we don't know how these things are going to occur and how bad things are going to get. But again, well, we've seen all kinds of indications. So uh, we just need to be ready. That's what God calls us to do, to be ready. So... Some praises this morning and some requests. We'll share them, then we'll go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll spend the rest of the time allowing Zena to share the testimony that God's laid on her heart about Allie, and what a blessing it was in the first service, and we pray that you'll be blessed just as much in this service. All right. Some praises this morning, Julie Bailey. And we've been getting, uh, we've been getting uh, prayer, prayer requests and praises through the website, through phone calls, through Facebook, all kinds of different things this week, and, and that's, it's, it's an exciting time because we're using the media, the social media, to get some of these things, and when someone asks for prayer, we'll pray for them. Uh, the actual prayer on Wednesday night came in a little later than we, we were here to see for it, but uh, we'll take care of that, and we put them on the list. Uh, Julie Bailey is the first one that came through, and uh, praise God that she had knee surgery. It went very well spending a, after spending a few weeks with her daughter. She's now home and continue to pray for her as she has to go through therapy. Uh, one that was uh, a phone call that I received, uh, Rick Reinsmith. Uh, he's been diagnosed with cancer and was scheduled for surgery on April 4th, which I believe was Thursday, and we haven't heard anything about him, but we'll continue to pray for healing and for strength for Rick and his family during this uh, difficult time. Ann Wynn, this is one that come through the, the uh, website, and she's been here before on our prayer list before. Her surgery was a success. Uh, she's finally getting the relief that she needs, Please continue to pray for her healing. So God is at work. Amen. We see him heal in the healing process. We see all this, and not everything turns out to be perfect yet, but uh, one day it will be with us as, as we're believers. Uh, B.D. Evinger, uh, an update on her. She's in rehab in Florida, recuperating from the broken hip. When she's well enough, she'll be traveling back home. So please pray for that recovery and for a safe trip home. Janet, she's here this morning. I understand your surgery went well. Where's she at? So was, there she is. You changed sides. Yeah, she moved on me. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's all right. Don't you know that everybody has an assigned seat? Did you know that? Okay. All right. All right. Some other people changed seats this morning on me too, but that's okay. Janet, you're doing well, right? Yeah. Now getting ready for the second one. No. No? How about that? Oh. Praise God for that. All right. How about that? Praise God. Okay, I had a number of requests from the, the Bible study on Monday. Uh, Margaret Bell, please pray for some health needs for her. Christopher Garlock, he's uh, going to physical therapy, so pray for him. Uh, Carolyn, I praise that uh, the tremors that she was having are not any worse, so we'll pray that God will make them better. 
Uh, the Flesher family, I've already mentioned. Uh, please pray for them. Uh, as Harriet passed, he was called home to be with the Lord. 95 years young. How about that? Wow. So uh, that again, that service will be on the 19th. Don't have the exact times yet. They're going to work that out tomorrow. So especially pray for Greg. Uh, he's struggling with this different, different difficulties. And Helen, Wanda Thebes, where's she at? Is she leaving? Okay, Tell, how do you say the last name? Your sister's husband? Tebes. Tebes, okay. Well, I won't get it right the next time either, so just so you know. Okay, Wanda Tebes, who is Helen's sister, her husband, actually passed away on Easter Sunday. So please pray for the family there as well. Lieutenant Eleanor Hannon, who is Lori's daughter, and, and Tom back there, his, his granddaughter. She's going to be deployed here to Korea in a few weeks, so... Uh, Please continue to keep her in your prayers. And uh, I have a few cards from this morning. Uh, prayer for Ryan's dad, Bill Adams. He has a horrible cold. There's a lot of that going around. Uh, continued prayer for Allie Wainan as she is to return to work uh, on the 10th. Debbie Fonestock has a friend, Patty, who needs prayer. She's having open heart surgery tomorrow. Uh, only 5% of her heart is working. She has a 50-50% chance of survival there, and she's only 52 years old, so please keep her in your prayers. Uh, also, the Clouser family, they requested prayer this morning, so please pray for them as well. That's what I have for you this morning, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the day you blessed us with. We thank you that the sun is shining, although we know your sun always shines in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to, to just to be in church together, to fellowship together, to hear from your word, to hear testimonies of, of your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Father, what a blessing. We thank you, Father, for the fact that you are all-knowing, always present, all-powerful. Just remind us of that as we go through the trying times of our lives. We praise you this morning for the, the uh, surgical procedures and, and so forth that have been uh, successful and those that are on the mend and recuperating and, and their improved health conditions. And we pray for those also that are going through therapy and uh, thank you that they, are, they were able to get to the point where they need therapy. Thank you for those who, uh, who care for us, the doctors and the, the medical staff and the medical professionals. And we just uh, praise you and thank you that we have places that we can go when we need to have procedures or surgeries and so forth. We pray for those today that are, that are uh, going to have uh, procedures and surgeries in the upcoming days and weeks. And for those that are uh, in the hospital, and uh, we just pray that you would uh, make them better so that they can they can come home as well. And uh, for all those who are having difficulties of any kind of health, those who may have been diagnosed with something that they had no clue that was even even on the scope and on the radar, we just pray, Father, for peace for them and for for guidance and for direction, and that uh, you would uh, touch them with a, a mighty touch of your healing hand, and that you would comfort them during this difficult time. There are those who have lost loved ones as well, as we've mentioned. Be with the families there. Uh, wrap your loving arms around them. Father, grant them the, the opportunity to grieve that they need and place that person to those persons in their paths who can share the good news of Jesus Christ with them and can comfort them and just maybe just sit with them, not even say a word. We thank you that we have opportunity to do that. Father, we look forward to that one day when we can spend eternity in heaven with you through the hope that we have in Christ as believers and followers of Jesus Christ. We know that we heard earlier this morning that, that you have prepared a place for us. And when you say you pre prepared a place for us, you're going to come send your son back for us. And we look forward to that day, sometimes sooner rather than later. And we do thank you for the reminders this week, as we heard, uh, as, as some felt the earthquake, uh, the minor earthquake, and some experienced flooding or, or difficulties with the, the rains. And tomorrow, as we'll see the eclipse, that, that these are all biblical signs. And uh, we just thank you and praise you for that reminder. Now, we can't get caught up in it, and we shouldn't get caught up in it, but what we need to be reminded of is that we need to be ready for that day when Christ comes, comes back to earth, or that day that uh, he calls us, you call us home to be with you, Father. So prepare our hearts, prepare our lives, but yet we still need to continue to work as we move forward. Father, we pray for those today who may be struggling with a relationship or those who may be struggling financially, or those who need a word of encouragement, those maybe who need a word of wisdom, Father, we ask that you would grant what they need according to your perfect plan, your perfect purpose, and your perfect will for their lives. We thank you, Father, that you do answer our prayers. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, and sometimes it's wait. And we understand, Father, although it's difficult for us that maybe other things need to happen before our prayers can be answered the way we would hope they would be answered. 
So uh, we just ask, Father, that you would remind us of that, that you would keep us calm, that you would remind us to, to stay strong and to stay faithful, and remind us also that when it seems that you're distant, it's not you that moved, it's us. So draw us closer to you. Father, we pray today for the upcoming primary elections. We pray for our country and the, and the mess that it's in. But again, as I've said so many times, you can take that mess and turn it into your message. Help us to do just that, Father. You've given us the opportunity and the boldness and the confidence to do that and the good news to share with others and just put that person or those persons in our paths that we can do that with. And then, Father, that you would receive all praise, honor, and glory and that your kingdom here on earth we grow. Father, we ask you this morning that you would continue to be with us here as the church looks for that senior pastor that you've already got picked out. Open our hearts and our ears and our minds for that. Father, help us to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit and we know, Father, that that person is the right person. Just help us, help us to be, help us to know that you're going to reveal that person to us in your time. We still have work to do here before that happens. So we thank you and we praise you for that. We thank you that you are a good God, that you are a merciful God, that you're a loving God. And we stand on those promises, the promise that you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us, the promise that you said you are the same today, yesterday, and forever. The promise, Father, that, uh, that you never change and that you have everything under control, even when the world around us seems to be falling out of control. So, Father, we thank you for those promises as well. Father, we pray for those who may have unspoken requests today. We place them at the foot of your throne, asking that you have your way with them. Meet all the needs and all the requests that have been placed before you. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. Father, now as we prepare to hear the testimony that uh, Zena has to share for us this morning, if, Allie's, Allie's life and, and what's happened since you've called her home to be with you. Father, I just pray that you would give Zena the strong voice that she needs, and I pray that you give her the words that we're in need of hearing. Father, may we see her standing here, but may we hear you bold and beautiful, sharing the words of a life that's made a difference in so many people. We thank you and we praise you for the opportunity to hear that today. Be with those who are here as part of the family, as represented by uh, Zena and her family, and ask that you would touch them in a special way. Also, we thank you for those who are here today that uh, don't come on a regular basis. We pray that somehow they would be blessed, that they would realize that this, in fact, is the hospital on the hill, that we are here for them, that we love them, and that Jesus loves them. We thank you now for hearing our prayers, but most importantly, we thank you for Christ. We pray these things in his name. Amen. If you were at the first service, I think a couple of you were, uh, we're glad that you were here. We pray that you were blessed. I know I was blessed. Uh, it's interesting, uh, and I'm going to share this in a little different way. It's, it's interesting, uh, one of the things that I've read in, in several times is that when, we're, when we go from this life into the next, okay, we have a date when we were born on a tombstone, and we have a date when, we were, when God called us home on a tombstone. But you see, it's that dash that's our life. That little dash in there is our life. And how we handle things and how God has us work and how we share the good news of Jesus Christ and how we live our lives and how people see us living our lives is so important. But this morning, you're not only going to hear about how a young lady lived her Good morning. That, can, can you hear me? Um, so I'm Zena Speck, as he said. And um, I shared at the first service, I grew up in this church. Um, and actually, Tom and I were the first wedding in this church, in the new building. So um, I came here a long time. And then we went to another church, raised our children there. And then and now we're back. So it always feels like home. And, uh, and I'm honored to share from the same pulpit that Allison did share from during her journey. Um, so it's my job to carry on. Um, so I'd like to share about my daughter's faith journey through cancer today. And if you would, just bow your heads with me to open with prayer. Father God, please use me to share the good news of salvation and hope when we trust in you. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So we all have worries, struggles, and anxieties. Every single one of us do. And sometimes they're little things, and sometimes they're really big things. Um, 
cancer was a really big thing for us that kind of came out of the blue. And we could have spent five years worrying the entire time, um, but God tells us not to worry. In his word, in Matthew 6, 34, he says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And in Proverbs 3, 5, which was one of Allie's often quoted verses, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, which we referred to that often because there were many times we didn't understand. Things didn't make sense, but we trusted God. I learned to lean on God like I had never leaned on God before as we walked that path. And I found another quote. Allison was an English major, and she loved her quotes, and she loved Corey Ten Boom. And this is from Corey, and it says, Worrying is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength. You are carrying two days at once. It is moving into tomorrow ahead of time. Worrying does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. Worrying empties today of its strength. And I found that to be very, very true. And I can tell you that Allison did her very best to not let worry steal her joy. And every day she looked for joy, even during long hospital stays, um, we did things to find joy. So Allison was a very vibrant young woman. Um, we had to run to keep up with her. She had a heart to serve others. And when she was little, even as a little girl, she would often ask us how kids in other countries got food and clothes and different things, and always concerned. Um, and from the time she was small, kept talking about being a missionary. So when we went to creation and she learned about Compassion International, where you can actually take a child and you can send them money and you can help them, she wanted to take all the children. <laughs> um, so we had to limit the number of children that we sponsored. Um, and actually, after she passed, Tom and I finished her uh, the donation for the Compassion children that she had adopted. Um, we finished out that, so because we knew that's what she would have wanted us to do. As a teenager, when she began driving, she would see people along the road, or especially in the winter, in the cold, and we would get calls often, sometimes weekly. Um, Mom, Dad, I have someone here. Can we put them up in the hotel for the night? They're, they need food. And I found a hotel that serves breakfast. So if you can just pay for their room. Um, and we did that multiple times. Um, but at one point, we kind of had to say, listen, we're not an ATM machine. Like, there is a limit to the number of funds we can provide. So um, you know, you need to scale back a little bit. And the one story I always share is uh, she was going to Messiah to get her books her freshman year. She drove over, got her books. She's on her way home driving on Route 15, and there's a gentleman in a three-piece suit walking along the side of the road pulling a suitcase. And she knew better than to call me. She called her father. <laughs> and she said, Dad, can I pick this guy up? He says, yes. So she puts him in the car, and she brings him home. And he tells Tom and tells us that he lost his wallet and he was walking home to New York. And so Tom took him down to the Quality Inn and we got him a room for the night. And uh, he told Tom when Tom dropped him off that he had a very lucrative business in New York and he had a six-figure income and that when he got home, he was going to send us a very generous check for all that we did for him. Well, that was 15 years ago, and we're still waiting for a check. <laughs> so Allie had a huge heart for God, for serving. And again, like I said, her dream was to be a missionary. But she started not feeling well her senior year of high school, and I took her to a bunch of doctors. They were very vague symptoms, and they just couldn't find anything. They did a bunch of tests, and they just kept coming back telling us there was nothing they could see. So she went to Messiah and started her freshman year. And at Christmas time, she was singing in the women's choir. And we were invited to hear the concert. So we went down. And while we were there, she said, Mom, I have this lump in my stomach I want you to look at. So I looked at it. And I'm a nurse. And I took one look. And I was very concerned. Um, I had no idea at that point the journey that we were going to go on based on that lump. So at the age of 18, 
Allie was diagnosed with a very large, inoperable, we were told, tumor on her liver. And the local doctors said that they thought for sure it was cancer. They didn't even want to biopsy it. They said there was no need to biopsy it because she had six months to a year to live. So uh, if you knew Allison and her spirit, um, in the book, I share a poem that I found in one of her journals that she wrote in 2012 um, called Expiration Date. So I'm going to share that, and you can get a little taste of her feeling for what the doctor had to say about her six months to a year prognosis. I feel a slight empathy for that pack of cheese in the refrigerator door. How old is it, my brother yells. I shudder because I know how they'll tell. Just check the expiration date and out it goes if it's a week too late. Six months to a year is what they stamped on me, an expiration date they could guarantee. I run my hands over the naked skin that replaces where my hair had been. I shake my head and smile. What did they know? They stamped that on two years ago. And thankfully, no one's checked to see if the expiration is out on me. Um, so we weren't willing to accept that grim prognosis, and um, through an amazing series of events that are detailed in the book, God led us to Johns Hopkins in Maryland. In fact, uh, each time I needed God uh, to guide me, to give me direction, I prayed and hit my knees, and, and God would open a door or provide a way. So when we went to Hopkins, Allie went to the pediatric oncology unit because she was 18, and at the age of 18, she was still considered pediatric. And um, I know that was a God instance as well because there's a huge difference between the pediatric oncology world and the adult oncology world. And I am thankful that she landed in the pediatric oncology ward. In that ward, we met one of our strongest prayer warriors, who you're going to see later in a video, Dr. Jessica Shand. She was Allie's primary oncology doctor, and what a blessing. A, a believer who shared our, our faith and who prayed with Allie. And there were times where we would go into appointments and she would say, I have nothing to offer you, but I can pray with you. So they developed a beautiful spiritual bond, and we never left the clinic without a prayer covering from Dr. Shand. Dr. Shand has since moved home to New York. That's where she's from. She finished her um, time at Hopkins and training, and she's in Rochester. And she's not only an oncology um, doctor, she's become a professor. And she teaches a class called Faith-Seeking Understanding. And part of her becoming a professor and teaching this class had to do with Allison's influence in her life. And this class, basically, she uses Allison's YouTube testimony and this book um, to encourage fellow physicians, clergymen, and other caregivers to minister not just to the body, but to the spirit of each and every patient. So to say that Allie left a lasting impact on the medical community would be an understatement. So during our time in the pediatric clinic, I met a lot of families, too many families, with children fighting cancer. But the one thing that we learned along the way is that a lot of the kids like to name their tumors. Um, it's a way of identifying the cancer. It, it gives it an identity. And um, sometimes it, it can be a fun way give a little bit of humor to the situation, if you can. And uh, so we heard lots of names. Um, we heard Huey, Dewey, and Louie, um, Stuart, uh, another kid called his the Terminator, a um, variety of names that kind of helped to lighten the burden slightly. So at the time, Allie was a big Disney fan. She loved um, Disney so much. And the, the movie at that time that was big was Up. And the main character in Up is Ellie. If I don't know if any of you have ever seen Up. But Ellie reminded me of Allie. Ellie was uh, optimistic, adventurous, um, and her, she found joy in life's little moments. She made the best of each and every moment. 
Well, Allie chose to call her tumor Carl, after Ellie's grumpy, grouchy, bitter husband, who is left behind when Ellie dies. And he lives in the past. He refuses to move forward. And they're doing construction all around his home, and he refuses to leave. So we joked about giving Carl an eviction notice, because that's what they do in the movie. Um, and actually, we did give Allie's Carl an eviction notice. Um, after some very intense chemo, she had a successful surgery, and they removed all cancer from her liver, and she was declared cancer-free, and we thought we were done. Um, we claimed God's healing, and she was traveling and giving testimony and sharing, and that lasted eight months. And we went in for scans, and the cancer came back in her liver and spread to her lung at that time. Um, but when we had that eviction notice of Carl, when we drove up the driveway the, the day we came home from Hopkins after her successful surgery, Tom's family had put a big banner in the yard that said, Carl doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> um, the other thing that was made, one of Allie's friends made her the rubber silicone bracelets that said, God is bigger than Carl. And I can tell you all of Allie's doctors, her entire medical team got those. Anybody that met Allie at Hopkins got one of those. Um, there are still people in the community that wear them. In fact, just last night, we saw our friend. He showed his, his bracelet. He said, I leave it on. He said, I put it on when I first got it. I've never taken it off. And he said, it's just a reminder to me of Allie's faith. So um, at this point, I'd like to share a video that Allison actually made. Um, she made this video to play each time she shared her testimony. Um, she used to sing the song at the end of her testimony, but as her lungs, um, she had multiple surgeries, she sometimes had trouble singing, so she made the video so that she could share the song that you're going to hear. She wrote and she sang. Um, and I hope that this will show you, just give you a good picture of the, the love and the laughter that Allie brought into our lives, even through this journey. Um, and please try and listen to the words to the song because it is very meaningful. I can go back. Am I there? I'm sorry. Play?
Crafted our race, your hands filled the clay that sculpted the ones I left to you, and descended to save this people of dust. Lord, who am I not to trust? God the Almighty, you fashioned each cell that is in me. You spoke the world into being. our race, your hands filled the clay that sculpted the ones I lived to you, and descended to save this people of dust. Lord, who am I not to trust in you? One, two, three. Happy end of chemo to you. Happy end of chemo to you. So um, the ladies that were doing the woo, the first woo was her chemo nurse that said, woo, I don't have to give chemo anymore. Um, and then the second one that joined in was Dr. Shand um, celebrating. So that celebration, uh, obviously we thought we were done with chemo. That was her end of chemo party. And uh, that lasted eight months um, and the cancer came back. Um, so the book will take you through every emotion from laughter to tears, um, but I'm hoping that the overall feeling you get when you finish it is hope, um, that you will have hope in a God that you can trust in any and all circumstances. Another verse Sally claimed on her journey was Jeremiah 29 11, um, which was, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans for a hope and a future. So that hope is what I pray you'll find. Um, so I didn't share this in the first, but I wanted to write this book. I knew that for a long time. I just didn't know how or where to start. And again, I did what I always do. I prayed. I said, God, I need help. Um, I don't know what to do. Send me help. Well, a friend of mine was at church, and a lady walked up to her and said, God gave me a word, and you're supposed to go help Alice or help Zena write a book about Allison's journey. So she was kind of like, okay. So she called me and said, hey, can I stop over for a cup of coffee? So she came for coffee, and what started as a cup of coffee was a nine-year journey, and the book was the end result. Um, my friend Sandy organized all my chapters, titled my chapters, helped me find references for all the devotionals that I used, and most importantly, she prayed for me and she prayed with me. And um, writing that book was probably the second hardest thing I've done. Um, watching Allison battle cancer was the first. So, as I said, every time I have gone to God in prayer, he's provided. So I'd like to share in the book, there's a story, um, this is after Allison had passed. It was in November of 2014. She had passed in March. It was eight months after her passing, and I was having a tough time. I was having a rough day, and I was just saying, God, you know, I would just love for you to somehow let me know that Allie knows that we're doing our best to keep her spirit alive, that we're working hard to make sure that the foundation she laid, we're continuing. And um, so I'm driving to work, and I have my Christian radio on. I was listening to Word FM 88.1. And Allison came through my radio that morning. And I'd like you to listen to what I heard. You help us tell a story. Hi, my name is Allie. Three years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. And my mom has been amazing and 
has stood by me through absolutely everything. There's hope, grace, and a moment designed by God just for you. She cut back her work hours so she could come live with me at the hospital. She gave up such a huge portion of her life. And I can honestly say that if it wasn't for her, I would not be alive. It's such an amazing woman of God and such a prayer warrior. And not only was she there for me, but she was on her knees for me. And I thank God every single day that he blessed me with such an amazing mom. And while many life stories are still being written at Word FM, listeners here go... So, it was pretty dramatic. Um, you know, I asked God to give me something, and he gave me that, and it's precious. So I immediately went to work, and I emailed the radio station, and I said, I must get my hands on this clip. Um, I, please tell me how you got this clip. And this was the response from the email. It is absolutely an honor to send you both Allison's original phone call and the produced version that played this morning on the radio. She left that message with us in May of 2013. It was a Mother's Day. You were to call in and talk about your mother. They made it into a Thanksgiving commercial for me in November when I asked. Um, it was created into a listener story two months ago. I am imagining God patiently waiting this morning for the right moment to present you with the gift of hearing her voice. He designed the timing just for you. I am weeping over the obvious hand of God at work today. Your story has blessed us. So, uh, and as a result, I did get to know that lady at the radio station. We became friends, and she came to the book launch, and I got to meet her in person. She actually came and got a book, and it was wonderful. Um, so, I guess I know all of us have heard people say, you only live once. You know, that's a big phrase. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. You only die once. You live every single day. And Allison taught me that by how she lived her life. And she shared Jesus with anybody that would listen. Um, at one point in her treatment, she was discussing that there weren't a lot of options with Dr. Shand. And Allie made a very courageous decision to stop all treatment. Um, she wanted to go on a mission trip to Kenya. That was her lifelong dream. Remember, she wanted to be a missionary. And she tried twice. We had to cancel the trip because of cancer. So she stopped treatment, and she made that trip to Kenya three weeks and absolutely loved it. She graduated from Messiah with her class, even though she missed an entire semester. Um, and she had hair to pin her hat to, which was also one of her requests. And then on a gorgeous day in June of 2013, she got married. Um, and there is a picture on the table in the lobby of from her wedding day. She was just glowing. Um, she was married for eight months before Jesus called her home. Um, so about a year ago, I started following a young lady on Instagram. There are some good things that come out of social media. Um, and this was one. This lady, I just was so inspired by her because she also had cancer. She was terminal, a little older than Allison. She was married with a four-year-old son. And her husband kind of blogged her journey. And he um, shared this eulogy from her funeral service after she passed. And I want to share a portion of his very powerful words. I think he summarized exactly what this book represents and what Allie's testimony continues to share. This is what he said. As the years went by, I realized that God had chosen Haley, that was his wife, for a greater purpose. She was chosen to change people. I would like to share a conversation I had with Haley. I told her, Haley, God is using you and your situation to help other people. In Haley's humorous way, she replied, well, I didn't agree to that, and he didn't ask me. I responded, God doesn't give these tasks to just anyone. You have been given a great responsibility. She got very quiet. I said, God could heal you right now, because he does that. He does miracles, and you would have an amazing story to tell. But think of the story you have to tell if you are not healed. The fact that you can praise God despite your suffering, and that you are able to focus on joys in life 
instead of complaining about how bad you have it, shows people that you can be patient in your suffering because you know that you will no longer suffer in eternity. Not many people understand it. How many people do you think God trusts with this responsibility? You will do more for the kingdom of God than most people will ever dream of doing. So many people need a healing in order to believe in Christ, but that doesn't apply to you. She had tears in her eyes, and I asked her if she remembered the parable of the lost sheep, and she said, I do, but could you read it? So I got out my Bible, Luke 15, 3 through 7, and I read. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Haley seemed confused by the parable, and I said, maybe you're being used to save that one person, that one sheep that went astray. Is your suffering worth it if you save only one person? She said, I don't know. I have suffered greatly. I looked at her with tears in my eyes and said, well, I am the one. I am the stray sheep. You were sent to save me, and you did. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be the person I am today, and I definitely wouldn't have the faith I have. So is your suffering worth it? Am I worth saving? Tears ran down her face as she understood, and she said, of course, I would save you a thousand times over. Allison saved a lot of people, people who watched her live out her faith while she fought the toughest battle of her life. So my question to you is, what will your faith legacy be? As you live out your faith, how will your testimony impact other people? The subtitle of my book is Standing Firm and Suffering Well in the Midst of Cancer. Allie did that, and she realized that people were watching to see if she trusted the Lord in the valleys, because it's easy to trust God on the mountaintops. So my prayer is that Allison's testimony of hope that's found in this book will continue to save lives, change lives, and demonstrate the importance of suffering well in the face of adversity. In the end, Allison won. She rests in the arms of Jesus. And we will be together again one day. I'd like to share now a video. Um, Dr. Jessica Shand uh, wrote the foreword for the book and really wanted to be at my, the book launch in September. She couldn't be there. She had obligations in New York. So she sent the video. Um, I asked her to, to pray a prayer and a blessing over the book. And um, this is what she sent me. So please, please enjoy Dr. Shand. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Jessica Shand, and I am forever humbled by the heavenly love which has allowed me to celebrate this beautiful and momentous occasion, this testimony of hope, this binding and eternal love that joins everyone in this room, virtually or in person, to honor the life and the testimony of our beloved Allie through the launch of her book. As many of you know, and as I wrote in the foreword, I had the privilege of bearing witness to Allie's courage and the courage of her family to navigate the unthinkable with grace and to understand as few people can what it truly means to believe. In the eulogy I wrote at the passing of Allie's body from this earthly life, I reflected on how Allie never really belonged to us. She belonged to God, but lived her truth and her love so fully that that loss created an unspeakable pain. But through community, reflection and prayer drew us all even closer to him. Called to live a vibrant life, standing firm and suffering well in the midst of cancer, a beautiful book crafted with undying love by Allie herself and by her mother, Zena, 
living proof that the holiness of a mother's love extends beyond all boundaries. To open this book is to see the living words, many of them written by Allie herself, as she healed herself in God's name, and in so doing was able to heal so many others. You feel the fabric of her story with threads of beauty and uncompromising truth and pain and forgiveness and trust woven together in this beautiful fabric that only Allie could create. To experience the gift of this book is to experience the living water of faith flowing from the heart of our Lord to everyone who stands firm in the face of suffering and injustice knowing that not my will, but thy will be done. This beautiful book, this testimony of grief and faith and unconditional love is for me a perfect manifestation of Paul's letter to the Romans in chapter eight, verses 38 and 39. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Allie probably would have added that neither chemo, nor long hospital stays, nor college papers, nor heartbreaking scans, nor pain, nor disappointment, nor fear, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so let us gather our hands and our hearts in prayer as we say, Heavenly Father, continue to bless the soul and the spirit of Allison, who lives in glory with you for all eternity. Continue to bless her loving family and the community she created through her testimony, through her love, and through the writing and publishing of this book. Continue to bless the words on this page that they may bring comfort, peace, and the good news of God's unconditional love to all who suffer and all who stand firm. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. An amazing lady. And to close... Um, I'd like to read you a poem that I found. It's unknown. The author is unknown. Um, and to me, this just summarizes Allie's life. It summarizes this book. It summarizes what I hope you get out of this testimony. It's called Holes. I had been in that hole for a very long time, in the dark and in the damp, in the cold and in the slime. The shaft was above me. I could see it quite clear, but there was no way I could ever reach it from here. Nor could I remember the world way up there, so I lost all my hope, and I gave in to despair. I knew nothing but darkness, the floor and the walls, and then off in the distance I heard someone call. Get up, get ready, there's nothing the matter. Take rocks and old sticks and build up a fine ladder. This had never occurred to me. It hadn't crossed my mind, but I started to stack all the stones I could find. When I ran out of stones, then old sticks were my goal. For one way or another, I was going to get out of that hole. So I soon had a ladder that was sturdy and tall, and I thought, I'll soon leave this place once and for all. I climbed up the ladder. It was no easy task, for from lifting those boulders, my shoulders were sore. I climbed up the ladder, but soon had to stop, for my ladder stopped short some 10 feet from the top. I climbed back down my ladder and I started to cry. I had done all I could do. I gave my best try. And in spite of my work in this hole, I must die. And all I can do is sit and think, why? Was my ladder too short? Was the hole too deep? And from way up high, I heard a voice say, do not weep. And the faith, hope, and love that filled my chest as the voice said to me, I had done my best. He said, you've worked hard, your labor's been tough, but the ladder you've built is at last tall enough. Don't despair. You have reason to hope. Climb up your ladder. I'll throw down my rope. I climbed up the ladder and then climbed up the cord, and when I got to the top, there stood the Lord. I couldn't be happier. My struggle was done. 
I blinked in the brightness that came from the sun. I fell to the ground, his feet did I kiss. I cried, what can I do to repay thee for this? Then he looked around him. There were holes in the ground. They had people inside and they were seen all around. There were thousands of holes that were damp, dark, and deep. The Lord turned to me and said, feed my sheep. Then he went on his way to help other lost souls, and I got right to work calling down into those holes, get up, get ready, nothing's the matter. Take up rocks and sticks and build a fine ladder. It was now my turn to spread the good word, the most glorious message that man ever heard, that there is one who is willing to save one and all, and we've got to be ready when he gives the call. He'll pull us out of the hole that we're in, and he'll save all our souls from death and from sin. So don't lose faith. There is reason to hope. Build up your ladder. He'll throw down his rope. Thank you. I was going to share, share this at the first service, but I hadn't heard that poem. <laughs> she, want, she warned me last night she wanted to read it to me, and I said, no, I'll hear it tomorrow. And, and uh, I was just broke. I couldn't, couldn't talk. <laughs> but anyways, uh, God is good, and amen all the time. But, uh, you know, when Sissy went home and the day of the funeral, from this woman starting an email list, 10, 100, 1,000, four continents later, her the message got across. So it was just awesome. So the first day of the funeral, we stood in line seven and a half hours. The second day, five and a half hours. And many of those people came from New England states, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, Delaware, Georgia, Maryland, all over Pennsylvania. And by following the story for five and a half years, or six years, I guess, five years, they felt that they needed just to show up. And their story to us was, we never met your daughter physically, but we watched her grow with her spirit through your wife's messages to us. And we just felt that we needed to come and show up and show our support. And uh, after that, uh, it was several days later, we got a gift from Australia and I think Japan also, correct? People were touched. Plant that seed. Thanks. I buried my daughter um, in 2000, and uh, I didn't have God by my side. But I knew him and Tom for a long time. And uh, so I went to his daughter's funeral. And when I got um, to the casket, Tom was standing there. And uh, I said to Tom, I know what to say, but it's not going to matter. And I turned and walked away, and I got halfway out of the church. Tom came and said, when's the last time you were in church? I said, when I buried my daughter right here. He said, you got to come back. Can you imagine that? He's buried his daughter, and he cared about me. 
And uh, <laughs> here I am. Maybe you're here this morning and you're experiencing no hope. You think that things seem hopeless. If you have Jesus in your heart, Christ is Lord and Savior of your life, there's always hope. Amen. You see, when God seems distant, it's not him that moved, it's us. He's given us opportunity to come back. Time after time after time. And until Jesus returns, we can keep coming back. Remember the Israelites? That's us. Dumb Israelites. <laughs> the dumb Israelites. They go and mess up, and then they cry out to God, and God says, okay, I'll take you back. And they go and mess up again, and they go and mess up again, and they go and mess up again, and God keeps taking them back. He'll do that for you. He's done it for me. As we ask Barb to come this morning and take the light of Christ out into the world. If you're experiencing a period of hopelessness, I want you to come forward. We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you today. If you experience that hopelessness, because if you have Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you have hope. Maybe it needs to be revealed again to you, but you have hope. You see, there's always hope for believers. Now, if you're a non-believer, now it may be a little bit different for you because you have no hope. If you're a non-believer, you may leave the, don't want to leave this place today without experiencing that hope in Jesus Christ. So if you'd like to come forward, you're welcome to do so. Don't be bashful. We're here to pray for you. Sunday morning, folks. The beginning of a new week. Don't start that new week without the hope of Christ. Glowing from you as you leave this place. The testimony you heard this morning, something that you couldn't even dream of. It just couldn't. You couldn't. Allie was eight years old. Now, we were raising her at that time. We were going into another church. But Allie was eight years old. And uh, next. My daughter was eight years old. And she came to me after church one day and said, Daddy, I want to live for Jesus Christ. And uh, I said, Baby, you're, you know, your mom and dad are going to be, do the best we can. And. Uh, so as she grew through life, this young lady just blossomed. I mean, she absorbed herself into the Bible. If you would see her Bible, she has quotes all through that Bible. And uh, then whenever she started, when she started speaking, she was speaking at Messiah College, and she was the first student ever to speak at Messiah. And when she was done giving her message, I was just flabbergasted, and she came off the stage, and she came down there, and I looked at her in her eyes, and I said, Baby, you're now the teacher, and I'm the student. Amen. Scripture says that the people will know us by our fruit. God, the ultimate fruit inspector, if you will. What fruit do you show as you're out amongst the people in the world? as you follow that light from here, the light of Christ into the dark world. What fruit do you show? Will people, when you're gone from this earth, will people be able to say about you what they're able to say about Ali? That this person lived their life to the fullest, that they could possibly live it. You see, it's not just about living, it's about the legacy that you leave when God takes you from this life to the next. It's so important, folks. It's so important. Our lives will continue to re reveal to other people 
how we lived, how we lived, the difference that we can make, each and every one of us, if we would only set ourselves aside and let Christ shine through us. No matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing, lunch today, if you're in a restaurant, grab the hand of the person on either side of you. Say a little prayer. If you're thankful for the food that's placed before you, you'd be surprised the amount of people that'll come up to you and say, wow, that was really cool that you sit there. Well, you can do the same thing, folks. We serve a God who loves us, who cares for us, who sent his son to die for us. We celebrated that last week. And you see, then the cross was empty. And we keep trying to put him back on the cross. But the cross is empty and the grave is empty. And God is there for each and every one of us. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this day that you blessed us with. We thank you for the opportunity to hear the story of a good and faithful servant. That legacy that lives on. What will your legacy be? What will my legacy be? What will each of our legacies be as we move forward in this world? Father, we thank you and praise you for Christ. We thank you for the opportunities that he gives us now. My prayer is that each person in this place, each person within the sound of my voice this day, will be given opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ with someone else. Then that you would give them the boldness and the confidence and the words to speak or not to speak, just to do so. We thank you, Father, for this time. Most importantly, we thank you for Christ. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week. All the time.